everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this unusual gift bag or box. It just depends whether you want to have the handle or not. This is just a different size to the pumpkin one that I've done. So on my Halloween series 2018, I made a smaller version and it's, a, it's more narrower, I guess. I will link it up here because it might be a size that you would like to make. But I was just looking back at old videos and I just thought I want to redo that again in a bigger size. Now, it doesn't look like you'd actually fit much in here, but it's quite deceiving. You can fit a lot of sweets all in the bottom here because it does, you know, it comes up in the centre there. So it's just like a big triangle shape, but then you have all the space in amongst these sections as well. So like I said, it's quite deceiving. You can fit a lot inside this. Really, really easy to open. I've just reinforced these little tabs here and you just pull each one through the ribbon there. You may want to use magnets, Velcro, and I've shown other ways to do these as well. This style and this closure I have featured in quite a few videos, and again, I will link that playlist up here. But you can see now when you open it up, all of that space inside and glitter from the, um, the ribbon here. And then I've just put this really lovely topper on the top there, a little something for just for you. And I will show you all of that as well. So this is very quick and easy to make. So let me show you how. Okay, so for the sentiment, I use this one here, which is the Woodware One Liners. And I use the, a little something for you. And I'm probably gonna do that again for today's just cause I like that sentiment. Then I have used this one here, which is the Bright Rosa Sunflower Band dies. And that's how I've created that lovely, I'll show you again here, this sunflower effect there. And you can see the sentiment through the center. And then this is the Bright Rosa Sprigs and Twigs. And it was this one here that I've used. And I've just die cut it in some different greens. And uh, yeah, that's what we will be using to make that. So for this version and size, you are going to need two pieces of 10 and a half by 12 inch cardstock. Now ignore that I've cut the flower out of this one. I hadn't any more, well I did have some more of this cardstock, but it was another sheet of 12 by 12 and I just wanted that sunflower and I didn't want to cut in. So it's just a, a good way if you are ever in need of the same kind of cardstock. Just use one of the bases. I mean, it's gonna weaken obviously slightly there, but by the time we add that over there and then these as well, you're not gonna see any of that. So that was just what I'd done there. I thought I would leave it in there and show you. So I've already prepared this one side here and this is what we need to do with this one. You're also gonna need a oval shape. So I'm using, you could use a die as well. I'll give you the rough measurements of this one in a minute. It's from my X-Cut cutting system. And um, yeah, we will show you, I'll show you that in a moment. So along the 10 and a half inch side, you want to score at five and 10, okay? Five and 10. And then along the 12 inch side, you wanna score at five and 10 and a half. And then you want to go back along the ten and a half and score at one and three quarters and three and a quarter, but just down to the first score line. And then at six and three quarters and eight and a quarter, again, just down to that first score line. Okay, so you want to do that on both pieces. Get rid of the scoreboard and then with a metal stylus and your oval shape. What we're going to be doing is we're going to draw our oval score line from the bottom left, ignore all of your base, okay? Ignore all of that section, you're not doing nothing within there, you're working within this piece here and you don't want to do any scoring within that top section there, it's just within these two big areas. So you want to lay your stylus down in the corner here, pop your oval shape and you want it to sit so that it will hit this section here this crossover, okay? So again, if I sit that down and bring it, just move it until that sits there. So I can see when my stylus goes to that point there, it's gonna be joining nicely. So I'm gonna start from there actually and come down and around. You wanna go over a couple of times so you get a nice score line. So now if I bring that up, can you just see, there we go. You see I've joined it right up to the bottom corner of that square there and then all the way down to the corner there. So the key to get this, you know, looking good is make sure you get them right down into that corner and it joins perfectly there. So then I'm gonna do this side. So I'm gonna flip it and now I'm gonna start from the bottom of that square 
sit that down and again just move this oval until it, it sits within this crossover section here. So, you know, just what, find what works best so I can see now they're going to join. And just take your time with it. So it is easy to do, it's just, you know, making sure that you get that, you know, spot on as you can. So now you can see I've got that shape in the centre there. It's a bit like a, a vase, that kind of neck that goes through the centre. Also the size of this one, because I'm working on the outer side of it, so it's six inches by seven inches, okay? Then I'm coming now into this next section. So you'll see there, all of that has been within this square here, or rectangle. Now we're working within this one here, but you don't want to go over into your tab there. Okay, so ignore all that. Again, you're just working within that center piece. So I'm just gonna pop my stylus down there. Once you've done these, I went through a phase of doing lots of these kind of style boxes. Again, they are all on the channel. And I should, you know, hopefully I'll put them in that playlist for you to look at. You kind of get into the swing of it. And you know what you're doing, you know. Yeah, it's quite quick. So just take your time to start with. And then once you're comfortable, you know, with all the scoring and stuff, it's quite easy to do. So now, you see I've done it again. Just catch the light. There we go. You can see both of those score lines are coming down from that square Okay, so that's it. You want to do that on both of those pieces. Okay, so we can get rid of all of this. So I would just say now finish burnishing the rest of the score lines because it's best to do that first scoring before you do all this so that the card lays flat. But I was just showing you, you know, the areas that you need to work in. So now you want to cut up. So make sure you've got this section at the top. You're going to cut up that bottom score line all the way up to the first score line. So you'll be now just in the joining those bottoms of those curved score pieces there. And then this one here, you just want to remove completely. Okay. And now along this tab, come up to the next score line, remove that. Okay. Or just cut away there. Because then what you're actually going to do is cut all the way along to the start of that square piece. So these, these score lines here are actually just cut lines. So now I can just cut down that one, like so. Again, back on this, just while we're here, just trim a little wedge off of the ends, like so. I'm gonna just change my scissors, because I prefer, oh, I prefer these ones when I'm cutting smaller bits, and then cut down that one. So now along those square pieces, and then that one. And you'll have this section now, you want to remove that completely. Again, lots of you will be familiar with this kind of style. And then you can just, again, I'm coming in. I chop between two pairs of scissors when I do a lot of my boxes and bags and stuff because these are great for like longer part, like areas that I need to cut. Because I can get a nice straight cut. There we go. All right, so you see now we've freed up that square, and then this one here, I can just come down and remove that end there completely. So if I just remove that, and also keep these pieces, it's what I used on the other one to make these smaller squares to reinforce these squares. So again, I'll tell you that in a moment. Okay, so now you'll have something like that. Now, you want to take a wedge off of the bottom of three of these ones here. It doesn't really matter which ones, so I'm going to take another wedge off of this one here on the second piece, and then the last one is the one that's going to be stuck down last. Okay, so this, you know, one that is still in that square shape will be the last one we stick down, it will just cover all of these pieces. So next we need to just join it all together. So I've got this piece with the tab here and then this one with the straight piece you're going to stick those together so it becomes one long piece of cardstock. So just add in my glue all down that tab and then just lay this over there. and just make sure you get that base score line lined up with the one next to it. You can always trim along here if it's a little bit out and then if you flip it over bring in one side, I'm going to show you how to cut this in a moment Bring up this one, add glue again, 
and then just lay that one down. You can pop that one over the top. And again, everything should lay nice and flat. So next we want to cut here, okay? And you'll see what I've done. And we need to do that on every single corner when we fold it flat. And all this does, it just removes that bit of bulk that will, it just forms all around the top of this and it, it doesn't allow you to close it very well. Um, by taking that off, it will just take the pressure off of these kind of um, sections here. Um, and it just makes the whole thing close much nicer. And you can see there how it looks. It just gives it a nice finish by having that shape there. So I'm just gonna check with this one how far down I came. I think it was one and a half inches. Yeah, it is one and a half. So. Fold, you know, I've already done one, so I'm folding mine onto the next half here. Just grab a pencil and just mark one and a half inches down there. And then all you want to do is cut from that pencil mark up to the corner there. Okay, and then fold it in half again and just mark one and a half down there, and again, rub out any pencil that may still be there, but you can just uh, just cut that one away, and then I've just got to do my last one there. Okay, so that's what you should now have, apart from you, well, you might have a section like that as well, but you won't have that one there. Now, I would do this as well before we stick it all together. It's just a bit easier. So, so I cut these from all of the bits that we just cut away, but I've just trimmed them down ever so slightly to one and a quarter squared. And I'm just sticking them on each of those squares. You could do different colored paper if you want to, but I just thought use up the scraps that you know have come out of this project. And I'm just st sticking it over there because we're gonna put a hole punch through these. I just found it just reinforced it a little bit more and you could also put a little um, eyelet on there or grommet if you wanted to as well. Yeah, and once this glue sets, it just makes them very strong. So again, if you were putting something maybe with a little bit of weight in this, then this would just help reinforce that. So yeah, just four of those, one and a quarter squares and just cover those on the tops. Okay, and then you wanna add your hole punches. And again, it's just best to do this when everything is flat. So what I would suggest you do is you could do these two at the same time. If you wanna actually mark with a pencil the center, then you can, but I'm just gonna eyeball this like so. And then I'm just gonna bring it over to this side here. And you could just, well, I might as well punch right through again. You, I would just maybe put a pencil there if you didn't want to do that in case you're worried you won't line it up, but I'm just gonna sit that over there and then that one over like so. Okay, so we've prepared all of that now. So next we need to stick down the base. So what I would do first of all, for me anyways, I'm gonna pop in one of the sides. Remember the one that you've left completely square, that's the last one you're sticking down. So I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna actually just put my glue all around here. And then just stick that one over the top like that. And then again, I'm just gonna add my glue, bring that one up there, and then now I'm left with that square, like so. And I can just go in there, just make sure that's all nice and secure. For now what you wanna do is you wanna very carefully just start to kind of push in against the curve there. You see, it will go on its own eventually. Just kind of just push in next to it. And again there, I'm just pushing that one because these score lines here are actually gonna be going inside and you want this to stick on the outside. Can you see there? And again. Like so. You only need to do it a little bit because once it knows to go that way, it will just kind of do it itself. Like so. And then all of a sudden it will just kind of go into that shape. And then when we sit those down, all those hole punches should line up when we add the ribbon through. And there you have a really cool shape. I love this. So I'm just gonna get some ribbon now to put through the top there. Okay, I've got that same ribbon, and what I actually done is I'm gonna feed it through one of them, and I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue 
either side there and just open up the ribbon and just attach it rather than a knot. If you want to tie a knot you can but I'm just going to do it that way and then just trim off the excess there and now I've got my handle. So then what I do is go across the opposite one, feed that one through and that will bring those two together and then grab one of the other ones, it doesn't matter which one. That one will sit perfectly over there and then the last one and this will help bring everything together and square it all off. And then all that's left to do is your decoration. So I have these here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of shape into these. I'm just going to use my finger and my thumb there just to kind of bring up the petals. It always looks nice just to bring in a little bit of dimension, like so. And again with this one here, just kind of lifting up all of those petals. And then that one there as well. And this is all cut from that die set along with this little piece here. So then I'll bring in this glue here, just pop a blob there, sit that one so it offsets against the other one so you see the white underneath like so and then this one just a little bit there and again I'm going to sit these so they lay over the white petals like so and then this one here I'm actually going to use some hot glue and then that will go over there and just kind of hold everything in place and then I'm just going to put my sentiment through the middle of that which I'll do last. So now it's just adding these leaves so you want to decide you know where the front is so I'm going to go with this one which is the last one that I stuck down so that's going to go on the front there I mean that looks beautiful you know just as it is but I do like the thought of all these leaves on there as well so I'm just going to bring in my other one here just so I can actually see you know, remember what it was that I'd done. So I think I ended up trimming some of this off and I'm going to use my hot glue just for speed really for the video and just kind of pop them behind like so. And then I've got different colours. It's just nice to have, you know, those different shades of green. So I'm going to pop this one on the top here. And you're not going to see any of this, you hide it all in here because then that's going to be stuck onto there so nobody sees any of this. And just kind of hover it over the front just so you get to see you know, how it's all going to come together. So next you can just add your glue, let's get another glue stick. And then I'm going to sit that one just there, that looks so pretty. Okay, and then I've just stamped my sentiment there, a little bit of glue in the middle, and that is going to go right in through the centre of the flower there. Okay, and there you have it. I think it looks really, really cool. Can't wait to fill these up with some sweet treats and give them to some friends and family. I think they're adorable. So yeah, check out the playlist because there are different, obviously, styles there, sizes and things like that. But I've already got some more ideas on, you know, using this kind of curved shape and this closure and stuff. So um, yeah, look out for those. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. As always, I will link everything below. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so you get to see more fun videos and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.